Tucked away in the southwestern corner of Utah, an absolutely stunning labyrinth of canyons, cliffs, rock walls, and geologic formations lies, Zion National Park. Zion is nothing short of magical, and its iconic scenery is quite appreciated, as it was the second most visited national park in the United States in 2024, seeing just under 5 million visitors. Originally designated as Mukuntaweep National Monument in 1909 by William Howard Taft, Zion skirts the edge of three physiographical provinces, the Colorado Plateau, the Mojave Desert, and the Great Basin, leading to an absolute treasure trove of biodiversity, characterized by hundreds of different species of plants and animals. Zion is a world-class location to experience and study geology, as the cliffs and canyons of the park expose unique sedimentary and volcanic rocks that date back millions of years and shed light into past environments of the area. Moreover, these rocks have been tirelessly eroded and carved into the canyons they are today by powerful forces of nature, including by wind and by water. In this episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures, we're going to explore the fascinating geology of southwestern Utah's crown jewel, Zion National Park. Let's do it. Zion National Park boasts an incredible suite of sedimentary rock layers that date back to the Permian through Cretaceous periods and record what the landscape was like during those prehistoric times. These nine sedimentary units are stacked upon each other in the park and are a part of a greater geologic formation known as the Grand Staircase, a rich sequence of sedimentary layers that forms a staircase of sorts from the Grand Canyon in Arizona up through Zion to Bryce Canyon National Park in southern Utah. Sedimentary rocks are rocks that are formed by the accumulation and compaction of mineral and organic particles known as sediments, including sand, silt, mud, and lime. Zion National Park is a world-class location to see sedimentary rocks in all of their glory. The oldest rock unit at Zion is the Kaibab Limestone, a unit that dates back to the Upper Permian period, roughly 260 million years ago, and represents a time when what would become Zion National Park was a coral reef in a tropical shallow sea near the equator. The Kaibab Limestone is rich in fossils, most notably sponges, and can be found in the hurricane cliffs near Kalab Canyons within the park. Immediately above the Kaibab limestone lies the Moenkopi Formation, a unit of siltstone and mudstone that dates back to the early Triassic period, roughly 250 to 230 million years ago. The Moenkopi Formation is indicative of a vast river delta environment, with a maximum thickness of 1,800 feet in the vicinity of Zion. Much of the sediments that formed the Moenkopi Formation were sourced from an ancient volcanic arc in modern-day California to the west of Zion, and the unit has an abundance of plant fossils. The depositional environments recorded in the Moenkopi Formation show evidence of both transgression, or sea level rise, and regression, or sea level fall. Ripple marks, mud cracks, and other features in the rock document tidal flat and river delta environments in this unit. The next formation in the area is the Chinle Formation, a group of mudstone, siltstone, and sandstone that dates back to the late Triassic period, roughly 230 to 201 million years ago. At this time, Utah became a massive low elevation basin with several rivers flowing through it. A rich array of fossils of trees and animals adapted to swampy environments preserved in this unit suggests that the area was largely a low elevation swamp, similar to modern day Louisiana. As such, the Chinle Formation is a rich source of oil, with several oil wells drilling the unit in the Uinta Basin of northeastern Utah and the Rangeley Oil Field of northwestern Colorado. The Chinle Formation is also quite rich in mineral resources, including uranium, copper, manganese, iron, and gypsum. Uranium mines are plentiful in this unit, and boast high amounts of carnitite, uraninite, and other uranium minerals. The Moenave and Cayenta formations overlie the Chinle Formation, dating back roughly 210 to 180 million years to the late Triassic and early Jurassic periods. 
These formations are indicative of river environments, and record a mixture of high-energy and low-energy fluvial environments, including slow-moving rivers, fast-moving rivers, lakes, and floodplains. This is evidenced by the diversity of sediment size in these formations. Some parts of the Moanave and Cayenta formations are composed of larger clasts of sand, suggesting high-energy environments, while other portions of the units are composed of small clasts of silt and mud, suggesting low-energy environments. These units record rivers rather than coastal swamps due to the area experiencing roughly 10 million years of uplift prior to the deposition of these layers, mainly from mountain building events in modern day Nevada and California. The Moanave and Cayenta formations are famous for hosting extremely well preserved dinosaur footprints and other interesting fossils. Perhaps the most famous of Zion's rock units, the Navajo Sandstone, was deposited after the Moanave and Cayenta formations were. The Navajo Sandstone dates back 200 to 180 million years to the early Jurassic period, and is composed of gorgeous cliff-forming sandstones that were deposited in a vast desert environment, similar to the modern-day Sahara Desert. The area transitioned into a desert environment at this time due to an intense rain shadow created by the mountains west of the area in modern-day Nevada and California. All of the sand that eroded off of those mountains was blown from Nevada into the basin of modern-day Utah, depositing a colossal sea of sand dunes, known in geology as an erg, that was up to 2,200 feet deep in some places. As the years passed and the sand dunes became buried and compacted, they eventually became lithified into rock, forming the Navajo sandstone. The red sandstone indicates an abundance of iron oxide and sand grains, while the tan sandstone represents an abundance of silica and sand grains. The Navajo sandstone contains both red and white sandstone, as well as pink sandstones that are in between both end members in terms of iron and silica composition. Stratigraphically above the Navajo sandstone lies three more sandstone units, the Temple Cap and Carmel formations that date to the Jurassic period, and the Dakota sandstone that dates back to the early Cretaceous period. These units have a similar formation story as the Navajo sandstone that underlies them does, and they are roughly 180 to 90 million years old. They too are composed of both red, iron-rich sand and white, silica-rich sand, and they form the topmost sedimentary layers of Zion National Park. All of Zion's rich sedimentary layers were deposited at a time when the area was either just below sea level or just above sea level, yet the high point of the national park lies 8,726 feet above sea level, and the main feature of the park is a canyon that's almost 3,000 feet deep from its base to its top. So, how did all of Zion's rich sedimentary layers get uplifted from sea level to their current elevation thousands of feet above sea level? To begin to unpack this, let's go back in time 160 million years to the middle of the Jurassic period, a time when dinosaurs roamed the earth and humans weren't even a thought. At this time, off the coast of what would become North America, two tectonic plates were converging. The Farallon Plate, which underlied the ancient Pacific Ocean, was smashing into the North American Plate. As the Farallon Plate converged into North America, a vast mountain chain began to be uplifted as thousands of feet of rock was deformed and displaced. Geographically speaking, this mountain building event stretched from modern day Southern California through Eastern Nevada and Western Utah all the way up to Canada and was known as the Severe Orogeny. Evidence for this event abounds in Zion National Park, especially in the northwestern section of the park at Collab Canyons. If you embark on the beautiful Taylor Creek hike in Collab Canyons, you will see chunks of the Moanave Formation that have been completely folded over each other, attributed to the powerful Severe Orogeny. While the Severe Orogeny began the uplift of the area, things didn't really take off until about 20 million years ago, 140 million years after the onset of the Severe Orogeny. This was when the basin and range became active, cutting up the land, uplifting mountains, and down-dropping valleys to the west of the area in Nevada and western Utah. Large fault systems were generated in the area, including the Hurricane, Washington, and Severe Faults. 
these faults were responsible for uplifting the plateaus that Zion lies on, the Markagunt and Kalab plateaus, and they are still active today, posing great seismic threat to the area. In fact, a magnitude 5.8 earthquake occurred on the Washington Fault in 1992, generating a massive landslide that destroyed several homes in Springdale. Seismologists suggest that an earthquake as strong as magnitude 7.4 could occur in the area, which would be disastrous for St. George and surrounding cities and towns. Zion marks the eastern boundary of the basin and range due to the area being directly above the western edge of the stable core of North America. This means that while sedimentary units in the basin and range were cut up, rotated, deformed, and separated from each other, the sedimentary units of Zion remain intact due to their positioning on the western edge of this stable part of North America. The height of the uplift of Zion transpired about 13 million years ago, and during uplift, the Markagunt and Kalab plateaus were slightly rotated. Today, all of the sedimentary units in Zion gently dip to the east, attributed to the uplift that was generated by basin and range crustal extension in the area. In addition to the vast array of beautiful sedimentary rocks, Zion is also home to much younger igneous rocks that overlay these sedimentary units. Igneous rocks are rocks that are formed by the cooling and solidification of molten rock. Plutonic or intrusive igneous rocks, such as granite, are formed by the cooling and solidification of magma inside the earth, while volcanic or extrusive igneous rocks, such as basalt or andesite, are rocks that are formed by the cooling and solidification of lava that erupts out of a volcano. Magma is molten rock inside of the earth, while lava is molten rock that erupts out of volcanoes. Roughly 21 million years ago, a massive volcanic edifice known as the Pine Valley Lacolith was formed just west of Zion, directly attributed to the aforementioned basin and range crustal extension. Though its source is still hotly debated in the geological community, geologists agree that an influx of rising magma underneath the basin and range is what causes crustal extension in the region, and the Pine Valley Lacolith is a perfect case study of this phenomenon. The Pine Valley Lacolith formed as immense amounts of magma pooled beneath the extensive sedimentary layers of the area, and it showcases irrefutable evidence of extensive volcanism in the area. Volcanism in the region began 21 million years ago with the formation of the aforementioned Pine Valley Lacolith, and in fact, volcanism persists to this day. The Santa Clara Volcanic Field, just northwest of St. George, records volcanic activity as recent as 27,000 years ago, and the Markagunt Plateau Volcanic Field, just north of Zion, records volcanic eruptions as young as 975 years old, dating back to 1050 AD. The Santa Clara Volcanic Field is considered dormant, while the Markagunt Plateau is still considered active, likely to produce volcanic eruptions in the future. At Zion, lava flows of basalt and andesite that date back 1.4 million to 100,000 years ago are abundant, indicative of volcanic activity in the area. These lava flows form the topmost layers of the national park, and cinder cones are plentiful in the region, further showcasing evidence of recent volcanism. Zion National Park contains 13 mapped lava flows, most of which begin in the upper reaches of the park and flow above and through canyons in the park. Zion's dramatic canyons and cliffs are directly attributed to the powerful forces of erosion, most notably through water and wind erosion. Over millions of years, high-energy rivers and creeks have cut spectacular canyons in the sedimentary layers as they take advantage of planes of weakness within the rock. The park's main attraction, Zion Canyon, was cut by the Virgin River, mainly during times of flooding, and all of the other canyons have been cut by smaller creeks within the park. With a maximum depth of roughly 2,600 feet, Zion Canyon only took 2 million years to cut, as the Virgin River has cut roughly 1,300 vertical feet of material within the last 1 million years. This might not sound like much, but geologically speaking, that's hecka fast. Erosive forces continue to cut the park today, responsible for infrastructure damage during times of flooding. In 1995, large floods caused a massive landslide that blocked the Virgin River in Zion Canyon, trapping 450 people. In 2015, a flash flood tragically killed seven people in Keyhole Canyon. 
The earth remains alive and well here, especially during times of heavy rains, and it is absolutely critical to take the risk of flash floods seriously, especially in the late summer when the monsoon brings in large thunderstorms to the area. Zion National Park is one of the most beautiful places in the United States, and its scenery is underlain by quite the eventful story involving sedimentary layers, uplift, volcanoes, and floods. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about the fascinating geology of Zion National Park in this episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures, and if you plan on visiting Zion, please be sure to do so safely and to respect the beautiful landscape and ecosystem of the area. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to my channel, as it really helps me to get more videos like this out to y'all. Thanks for watching, and as always, PEACE! Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. If you enjoy content like this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and check out some of our other adventures right here. As always guys, thanks again and peace!